Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today we're going to be preparing for a hopefully exciting one-shot dungeon delve using Advanced Hero Quest. We're going to randomly roll up a character, pick them some sidekicks to help out, and then create some monster matrices in preparation for populating a procedurally generated dungeon in our next video, which we will play through using Advanced Hero Quest solo rule set. First of all, we need to generate our character. You can do this using a d12, but it's easier if you have a d12, a d8, a d6, and a d4. I happen to have some lovely RPG dice here that I will be using. If you really want to, you can select a race for your hero, but we are going to roll on the random table. We get a 9, which means we are a dwarf. You don't have to roll for gender, you can choose that, so we will be a male dwarf. Being a dwarf, we automatically get a plus 2 bonus to all of our tests to spot and disarm traps. Besides elves getting plus 1 to surprise rolls, this is the full extent of racial or class skills in this game. Next, we need to create our stats. The way this works, it's technically possible for any race to be good at anything. You can be a dwarf wizard or an elf bruiser with a double-handed battle axe, but certain outcomes are less likely. As a dwarf, we are the best melee fighters, so we roll d6 and add 5 for our weapon skill. And we get a 2. That's not great. That puts us at a weapon skill of 7, which is below average and means we will probably have to invest in weapons training early in the game if we want to stay effective. Next we have bow skill, how proficient we are with a ranged weapon. We roll d6 plus 4 and... We roll a 4, that puts us at 8, that's decent. We could really start working towards a ranged build with that. A dwarf with decent bow skill and a crossbow isn't something to mess with. The only problem is, we're going on a solo quest, and archers on their own are often at a bit of a disadvantage as they lack meat shields. Next, we roll d4 plus 3 for strength, and we get... 1. Good grief. We have the lowest possible starting strength of 4. That immediately rules out the use of double-handed axes and swords, which require a strength of 6 or more to carry. Next is toughness, we have to roll better here. We won't have numbers on our side in the dungeon, so we need to be able to soak some hits. Dwarves are naturally tough, so we get the best chance of rolling well with a modifier of plus four to a roll of d4. And we get a three, so not too bad, but we are probably going to have to invest in some decent armor to boost that even more. Unfortunately, the more armor you wear, the more it impacts your bow skill, which means we're going to be seriously impacting our best stat so far. Speed is next, it's d6 plus 3, and we get a 4. That's not bad as dwarves get the lowest modifier to their speed stat roll. Then we have bravery. This is an important one as we are probably going to meet some undead foes in the dungeon I'm creating, so we need to be stalwart. Unfortunately, we only roll a 3 on a d8, and to that we add 3 for a total of 6. Yikes. Next is intelligence. Dwarves aren't made for magic, so the roll is d8 plus 2. And this dwarf definitely isn't made for magic, that's a 1, for a grand total of 3. We would have trouble casting a shadow, never mind casting a spell. Finally, we roll for wounds, it's d4 plus 1, and we get a 3, that's okay. 4 wounds is fine as long as we can build up our toughness as well. The final stat for any hero is fate, all heroes start with 2 fate points, that's 2 rerolls per dungeon. The only other thing we need to do is figure out what our starting equipment is, and to do that we need to know how much money we have to spend. So we start by rolling a d4 and adding 4, then we multiply that result by 10 to give us a starting kitty between 50 and 80 gold pieces. And we roll a 3, giving us 70 gold. That's really fortunate because we will have a good amount of money to buy armour and weapons. What armour to buy though? Chainmail is too expensive, it's 50 gold and really out of the question unless you have a maximum amount of 80 gold to play with. Leather is a better option for us, it's only 25 gold and it gives us plus 1 toughness. I can also pick up a shield for another plus 1 toughness bonus. I need a weapon of course, we already know I'm not strong enough for a double handed weapon and because I am relying on armour to boost my toughness there will be a negative impact on my bow skill that really prevents me from relying on ranged weapons. So. I guess I just take an axe. That's another 25 gold. I have 10 gold left, so I will buy a dagger. This is a backup weapon, but more importantly, it's a weapon I can throw at range if I want to try to take down an enemy I can't reach. Let's update our character sheet with all this stuff. So we can see that taking a shield and leather armor has reduced my bow skill to 6, and the leather armor has also reduced my speed by 1 to 6 as well. 
However, my toughness is boosted to 9, which looks much more healthy. I should be able to shrug off a lot of attacks with that. You can see I've also filled in my hand-to-hand -hand and ranged combat charts. Things don't actually look too bad. My biggest concern is my really low strength, which means I only roll 2 damage dice with my axe. I'm really going to struggle to kill enemies, and I'm probably going to get overwhelmed. For that reason, I think I will call my dwarf... Sleepy because I expect him to be taking a dirt nap. Now, not all is lost. A lone hero gets to take two henchmen into the dungeon with them, and because I feel like it, I am going to give Sleepy a little extra help. Rather than regular henchmen, he is going to take two specialists, including a magic user from expansion content. First, we have a wizard's apprentice. An apprentice normally only hangs out with wizards as they want to learn new magic, but this is going to work thematically for me considering the storyline behind the adventure I have planned. It also means I can show off a little bit of magic in my playthrough. An apprentice only gets one spell and one spell component. Naturally, we will give him a phoenix feather so he can cast Flames of the Phoenix, a spell that will heal a character back to their starting wounds value. For our second companion, we are going to add a bit of muscle with the rather excellent melee expert, the Human Sergeant. Again, this will work thematically for me and will also help me to weather the storm in any fights. After all, this guy is tougher than me and is better with a sword. He's smarter and braver too. Maybe he's the real hero of this story. And there we have it, our brave hero Sleepy and his two companions. They are ready to go on an adventure, but first we need an adventure. For my one shot I have decided to draw on the monsters that are available for Hero Quest, simply because all of my Hero Quest pieces are painted. Advanced Hero Quest has stats for everything, so we have goblins, orcs, an orc champion, which would be our orc with a big sword, femurs, zombies, skeletons, mummies, chaos warriors, and even a chaos sorcerer. All of these monsters have been allocated a points value, or PV, and we use those values to create a series of matrices, and that's exactly what I have done here. I won't go through all the options here in depth, but the idea is this is an orc lair, so most of the stuff we will find is going to be green skinned. The wandering monster table is almost totally comprised of goblins and orcs to represent squads of guards patrolling the area. The Layers table is also heavily focused on greenskins, but there's also a chance of bumping into some spooky undead baddies, or a few chaos warriors who are obviously running the show and bossing the orcs around a bit. Finally, we have the quest rooms. I wanted these to be more like boss fights, so I went for fewer enemies that were much stronger. So we have individual mummies, or a couple of femurs, or even a rare chance of bumping into the sorcerer. The specialist monster table isn't used for this quest. I don't have any suitable specialists to draw from, and I think Sleepy is going to have a tough enough time as it is. And that's it! We've created our party and prepared our enemy forces. We are ready to begin. The next time we meet Sleepy, he will already be in a dark dungeon, trying to make the best out of a very bad day. I hope you will join me for that, because that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.